I assume you watched the debate the other night. What did you think? Oh, I I couldn't believe it. Hello, everybody. Good night. I, I, like from from that moment on, I mean, if it were a boxing match, they would have thrown in the towel after the first round. I couldn't believe it. And and a couple things on this: John Fetterman's health was a lot worse than I thought. And I live in the state, and I'm wired into the the the, the political apparatus here. And boy. What an indictment on the media trying to to cover for him uh, since the primary. Absolutely unbelievable. Um, it's also, I think, on an, an indictment on the Pennsylvania Democrat Party and in maybe even on John Fetterman himself and his family. I don't understand how they would they could they could put him through that in good conscience, although at, at the end of the day, it's his choice. And so um it was probably one of the worst debate performances that I've ever seen. And and when you watch the post-debate spin, that that was also extremely interesting to me. Um, you have all these blue checks on Twitter talking about like the debate as if nothing were wrong. Like if you read the ABC coverage of the debate, like you would think that there were no issues with John John Fetterman's cognitive state. If you read Reuters, you'd think there's no issues with John Fetterman's cognitive state. Um, they are still totally covering for him even now. And you look at, you watch how his staff reacted. It's like their entire response to the debate was a Chumbawamba song. You know, John <laughs> Fetterman gets knocked down, but he gets up again. But nobody's <laughs> going to keep John Fetterman down. And then the media regurgitated that over and over and over again. It was an absolute disaster in every way. And you are right. Pennsylvania is a very, very difficult state to to, to read. It's a state that closes late and closes fast. Um, Democrats have a 520 plus thousand person voter registration advantage. There are 1.2 million independents. Um, Republicans simply cannot win in this state without some crossover support. But the independents who are still on the fence, and I think a lot of those Democrats um, who have been voting Republicans since President Trump brought them into the fold, I think their minds are made up uh, after that debate. I think Oz runs away, but it's going to be close. Obviously, it's Pennsylvania, but I think I think Oz is going to win this thing. Wow. What what do you make of the early voting, though? Because mm -hmm. there was a reason that they didn't agree to do this debate until October 25th. Early voting has been underway in Pennsylvania for weeks now. And I heard a report saying that some 700,000 ballots had been cast already, 500,000 of which have come in from registered Dems who they believe would be Democratic votes, that, that there's a massive advantage for Fetterman in the early vote. And that's by design. I mean, to me, this feels, it feels like cheating because they knew something about him that they kept secret. And they, and, and last two nights ago was the big reveal. And the big reveal is he can't put two words together. He cannot put two sentences together without fudging his words, misunderstanding, merging his thoughts, like you said, he began the debate with a good night, everyone. I mean, he, something's gone wrong cognitively, and they hit it so they can bank those votes. Yeah, a absolutely. And and there's no question about it that, that John Fetterman and the entire Pennsylvania Democrat Party wanted a debate with Oz as late as humanly possible so that they could bank as many early votes as possible. Um, in Pennsylvania, I think people have been voting here for the better part of a month now. And you're right. I think John Fetterman has got 75 plus percent of those early votes. 700,000 people have already voted already. And to me, this sort of is emblematic of the problem with early voting. I, I wonder how many of the 400,000 plus people who early voted for Fetterman maybe want a mulligan on that vote. You know, mm. um, and, you know, I, I, that's why I'm I'm in favor of voting on Election Day um, so that people have all the information that that uh, all the current information that they need to cast their ballot. And, you know, part of me feels bad for, for John Fetterman, you know, but part of me doesn't. You know, he chose this. Um, he chose to run with it. The media covered for him. And now uh, the people of this state are are the ones that could potentially be left with a senator who can't 
string together two words, but whose votes will be cast on behalf of not only the people of this Commonwealth, but millions and millions of people all across this country. And and John Fetterman has been open about his positions on being the 51st vote to do away with the filibuster, packing the Supreme Court. He's, he's basically Bernie Sanders through and through, although somehow more extreme. And so I think, and, and frankly, Megan, I think the people of Pennsylvania are finally starting to see that. And again, after that debate performance, I really do think that this race is going to break Oz's way. I just do. Mm. All right. So let's just take a look back because you talk about the media and how they've been covering for him. I mean, they're, thr- they're thr- thrilled to have all those ban- uh, votes banked and to have it gone this way. They're totally, I'm sorry, in on it. I know that sounds like a weird no conspiracy, question. but you can have uh, you have them working together without it being an open agreement. And that's what's been happening between the Fetterman campaign and the press. Um, I take you back to the interview that was done by the NBC reporter Dasha Burns. She did the interview and it was clear that, you know, he had to use the, the same closed captioning system. And then she added as any good reporter would do. I mean, let me tell you, when I got back from interviewing Putin a couple of different times, it wasn't all about the exchange with Vladimir Putin. I would also explain to the audience, this is what it was like. This is what he was like. That's absolutely part of reporting. So Dasha Burns, with the the story with John Fetterman, is not that he's in the Kremlin. It's that he just had a massive stroke and we're all wondering how he's doing. And so, and he's given no face-to-face interviews, no on-camera interviews, so she gets one, responsibly comes out to try to tell us what she saw. I think we have the soundbite. Let's listen to it. The screen that he was looking at uh, was transcribing my questions so she, he could read them in real time. Because of that auditory processing issue, he has a hard time understanding what people are saying. Once he can read it, though, he, he can uh, understand. But I'll say e- even those small moments, as you know, Peter, behind the scenes, you know, when you're having some of that small talk before an interview, during some of those uh, conversations before the closed captioning was rolling, it wasn't clear that he could understand what we were saying. Well, she got pilloried for this. Pilloried. I mean, it, she was accused of ableism. <laughs> That's This is not ableism. This is not mocking someone for their inborn disability. This is trying to figure out whether someone is competent to hold a U.S. Senate seat. That is an entirely different matter. And I'll just give you a couple of examples. Okay, Rebecca Tracer of New York Magazine in the Cut, she tweeted she had recently interviewed Fetterman and found his comprehension is, quote, not at all impaired. He understands everything. It's just that he reads it, which requires extra acuity, I would argue, and responds in real time. Uh, Podcaster Kara Swisher, sorry to say, but I talked to John Fetterman for over an hour without stop or any aids, and this is just nonsense. Maybe this reporter is just bad at small talk. Uh, Molly Jong Fast, another journalist and podcast host, said she too recently interviewed Fetterman. He understood everything I was saying, and he was funny. And then when there was any pushback, uh, saying, you know, maybe this is an important comment and Pennsylvanians might care. You get things like this from Robert Shurum, director of University of Southern California Center for the Political Future. I thought or hoped we had passed this kind of prejudice <laughs> to just even ask, all right? And Stephen Overly, reporter for Politico, <laughs> suggesting this feels a hell of a lot like ableism. On and on it goes. Okay. Then we see him come out the other night, okay? He was fine, Kara Swisher. He was fine. There's something wrong with your small talk, you moron. Here's what we saw, okay? Watch. Here is what we saw. This is soundbite one. Hi. Good night, everybody. You know, he has never met an air, uh, uh, an oil company that he doesn't swipe right about. It's about supporting and helping, you know, young earners, excuse me, young, uh, young uh Young you know, students, to, to give them a break, I believe that, that supporting, uh, uh, I, I, I do support fracking, and I don't, I don't, I support fracking, and I stand, and I do support fracking. It's just the same the way that university, four degrees as well, too, but going to those kind of vocational schools, being able to create a career to, to, weigh, to excuse me, to wane uh, reach a lot of a uh, high salary and again supporting to reduce those costs are critical too. I want to look into the face of every woman 
in Pennsylvania. Yeah. I believe if my doctor believes that I'm fit to serve, and, and that's what I believe is appropriate, they all believe that I'm ready to be served. We can't be held, you know, you know, ransom to somebody like Russia. I made the opportunity to defend my community as the, the chief law enforcement officer there. Everybody in Braddock, uh, an overwhelming majority uh, community of, of black uh, community, and I've always believed that the choice believes women and their doctors. Again, and again, it's the Oz rule. He's on TV and he's lying. I never so I, I never supported any of that thing. His family's company was it was set, levied the largest fine for immigration hiring of 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 immigrant uh, illegals. Not at all impaired. These reporters look like liars. They look like partisan ideologues who have a horse in this race, who were part of the effort to obscure the truth until it was staring us right in the face two nights ago. No question about it. They're all partisan hacks. And 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 just to be direct, I mean, and not to mention that John Fetterman is the sitting lieutenant governor. He has a constitutional obligation to let the people of the Commonwealth know the condition of his health. When he had the stroke just prior uh, just prior to the primary, they covered it up. They said it was just a minor blip on the, like a minor hiccup in his health. Um, the media then helped him cover that up. And when you look at just like, look at the juxtaposition between the way that John Fetterman was tweeted, uh, was treated back then and the way that I was treated. I had multi million dollar media companies suing to sit in on my custody trial, suing me to sit on my custody trial as, as a private citizen. Yet they can't even ask basic questions about a sitting lieutenant governor's health that in, in the most important Senate race in the country. And I think there's no question that all of these reporters who then went after Dasha, right? That's her name. Like they owe her an apology. No question about it. And with regards to the Senate race and the questions that I think people of Pennsylvania need to ask right now after having watched that debate was if John Fetterman were in the NFL's concussion protocol, would you let him play on Sunday? I think the answer is no. Mm. Would mm. you let John Fetterman drive your children to school? I think the answer to that question is no. Would you let John Fetterman administer his own medication? I think the answer to that question is no. So why then? Would we vote to send him to the Senate, which, by the way, I don't know if you've talked to senators, but they have a fairly arduous schedule down there. It's a six year term. There are constant debates. How is he expected to serve in the United States Senate for six years? And I think mm -hmm. the, do people do people forget that I, too, had a brain injury. I fractured my skull in Afghanistan. I know how difficult the rehab for something like that can be. The left showed me, showed me no quarter uh, when I ran for Congress and I ran for Senate. There were no comments uh, about me about ableism back then.